approach the Lakers tonight with LeBron not playing compared to the two other games you played guys uh, that you guys played them this year? Well, it's a challenging game no matter how you look at it. They got to be um, very motivated. They've had a lot of close games um, leading up to now not counting yesterday. Uh, yesterday they, they got a, uh, a very slow start and you know it, it got away from them. Um, so look at they got a, a lot of good young players, a lot of guys that uh, certainly want to uh, prove they can win without him out there. And uh, we're gonna have to be ready. Uh, we don't know who's playing. Um, uh, I know Kuzma's been lifted his day to day, so I think there's probably a chance he he will play. But uh, they're a dangerous team. He's playing for you, Rick. Huh? Who's available to play for you? That wasn't. On who's Saturday. available? That wasn't on Saturday. Uh, I think everybody. JJ, Devin, all those guys. Yeah. Rick, what does it say about Brokaw that he can come off the bench and have a game like he had the other night, 15 points against him? Well, he's a he's a pro and he's stayed ready. He's done you know he's done an awful lot of work to keep himself ready for that opportunity, that moment. Um, and you know now that we have a full team, um, you know that that performance earned him being active tonight. So he will be active, and uh, so you know he'll be available and. He certainly will be ready. He's proven that. As a follow-up to that, Rick, I know that uh, on Saturday night you, you told us that you had watched, for example, Jalen's game when he played in a blowout against New Orleans, and that earned him some opportunities moving forward after that. How do you evaluate uh, the earning of future opportunities for Ryan based on his performance on Saturday? It's certainly in the memory bank. Um, I'm not saying he's going to definitely be in the first rotation tonight or anything like that but you know performances like that um, you know we're not necessarily an eye-opener because I've we've seen how hard he's worked to stay ready um, but it's great to know that there's a guy sitting there uh, on a moment's notice that is ready to come in and uh, and go hard and hold his own and, and be a plus Rick you reference plus minus here and there is a stats kind of contextual. But what does it mean about uh, Max and Cleveland's role that, uh, you know, over the course of the season, out of rotation players, he has the highest plus minus uh, Yeah, I know that. I know that. Um, and uh, all, I, all I can tell you is that I'm, I'm aware of it. And, uh, you know, that's basically it. Coach, Luca is such a critical piece for you guys offensively. He struggled against this particular team in the previous two meetings. What do you have to do to kind of get him more involved and get him easier looks this time around? Well, part of the adjustment of a first-year player is, you know, you learn from your previous games. And so, um, you know, the Lakers have been a tough matchup for us. Um, and even when LeBron hasn't been on the floor, I, I suspect that they've been pretty good in the first two games. I don't, I don't have the exact numbers, but it, it, it certainly f feels like they were. Um, and so, you know, Lucas, even though he's very young, he's had a lot of experiences, you know, in his career, um, getting to second and third games versus opponents both over in Europe and now here. And so uh, he'll make the adjustments, you know. Rick, a minute ago, you were talking about Ryan doing the work to make sure that he kept himself prepared. Can you characterize for us when you talk about doing the work, uh, you know, expand a little bit more on what that means in terms of what he's doing in practice to keep himself sharp? Is it, is it first guy there, last guy off the floor, or just, you know, what exactly is it, you know, having, having been down that road yourself as a player or somebody who had to, to do the work to stay ready? Yeah, he's one of the early guys getting there. Um, with. The recent schedule has been very little quality practice time, and so he does a lot of conditioning on his own. And you know, some of it is you, know, you you do certainly do shooting, and then you do like you mix in sprints in between your shooting drills to simulate um, you know game game type shots, you know, in, in fatigue type, type situations. And it's hard. It's hard. It's a hard thing to, to push yourself to do that when there aren't nine other NBA players out there running. But, you know, 
he's uh, he's done it and, and he kept himself ready. Rick, what does it say about the scouting department when we're not halfway through the season? We've got two rookies that come very close to having triple doubles. It's just what they're doing. <laughs> That's what I would say. You gonna sit down or are you gonna? Beasley. No more so than usual. <laughs> <laughs> but it's very rare. You know, to have two rookies have a triple up in the same season, though. Yeah, well, they didn't have them, but they were they were close. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> no, so, I mean, uh, you know, Smith had one last year. We we think, you know. Oh, he did. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, no, I've got. Uh, you know, Donnie Nelson is is great at evaluating talent. He's proven that many, many times over.